be kind of fun to do a kind of farm vlog update and share about some of the on-farm research projects that we have going on on our fields. Um, so this year we actually have five different on-farm research projects um, and two of them are on this field that we've just moved to. Um, so this is one of our few bottom fields. Uh, so we have nice long straight rows so it's really good for putting in plots but later on um, I can share some similar kind of uh, videos and share our our plots that we have kind of laid in um, on terrace fields and kind of show how those work as well. Um, but we have two plots here and um, we're just getting the field opened up today and then we'll probably work on the part of the field that doesn't have any plots on it um, and get it ready to go. We'll do some calibration loads, um, get the weights and get the, the yield monitor really calibrated uh, well so that we get really good data from these two plots. And um, then tomorrow we will be able to dive in and probably take out both of these plots. about six calibration loads and uh, the yield monitor error down to 0.1% so I think we are good to go for tomorrow and uh, to get going on the plots and getting those harvested. Okay it is Tuesday morning and we are back out uh, harvesting in the field. Um, I thought I would show you kind of where the plots are. I'm up on the hill and so you can see uh, down on the bottom where where the plots are really well. So on this side of the bottom down here we've got nitrogen rate blocks that are running um, the full length and then multiple passes and so I'll, I'll kind of show a diagram of that. And then over on this part we actually have our um, active downforce versus static downforce study. So this is what the plot on the east side looks like. We've got five different nitrogen rates um, and the rates change as you move down the field um, in about 300 foot length blocks there. Um, and then we have them repeated in different locations. You can see um, each of the five rates is repeated um, six times, I think, here. Um, so this whole plot, putting in these nitrogen uh, blocks like this and then harvesting it um, really is only possible with uh, the variable rate capabilities for nitrogen application and then being able to use yield monitor. So we'll extract the yield data points um, from the file from within each of these little blocks uh, to determine the yield of each of these different nitrogen rates. So with these nitrogen rate blocks, the first thing we'll be able to calculate is uh, just the optimum nitrogen rate on the field and different zones, uh, different soil types within the field. But we also collected a lot more data on this throughout the summer. Um, so we had uh, soil moisture sensors installed. We have a weather station on this field. We took soil samples at six inch depths down to four feet in a couple places to characterize uh, the soil texture and organic matter. We also did a lot of drone flights with a multi-spectral camera um, throughout the summer. Um, also took soil nitrogen tests um, for ammonium and nitrate um, in different, like the low, medium, and high nitrogen rate blocks that are out there um, in a few different spots in the field. Um, so the goal uh, is not only to just find out about what the optimum nitrogen rate was in the field, but also be able to evaluate some different technologies that are available to help better manage nitrogen. So since we have all this data um, and imagery, we'll be able to look at how we can use that imagery to um, manage in-season nitrogen applications. Uh, we'll also be able to look at different models, so things like Adaptin or Granular, um, Mazin, um, things like that, to see what they would predict. And then we have all this data to try to calibrate um, and compare 
um, how the models are doing and what, what information we can use to refine those approaches. Um, so a lot of data uh, collected all year, so it's really exciting to see it finally coming together. Really excited to, to get the yield data now. nitrogen plot and then that one is all done. On the downforce study, um, those are actually field length strips, so we're not using this kind of small block approach. Um, those are going to be field length strips, and so one strip will use static downforce, and then the next strip uh, turned on the active downforce, and kind of multiple strips going with and without the active downforce turned on. And on the downforce study, um, the only in-season data collection really was doing some early season stand counts and emergence counts, just um, really just in kind of one spot checking what the difference is um, on the emergence between the two, how quickly and how uniformly they came up. I have a minute here. I am listening to a new podcast. It is uh, from the University of Nebraska Lincoln Digital Ag Team. Um, the podcast is called Farm Bits. Um, it has one word. Um, and this week's episode is on automation um, and harvest logistics, so uh, very fitting for today's activities. Um, there's a new podcast every Thursday. They are on most of the major uh, podcast platforms. I'm listening to it on Spotify right now because that's what I have on my phone. Um, so nice podcast to check out this harvest season. Pretty wet all year. 